PC from Cortina City on another Friday night episode. An unusual start to the proceedings. What do you see on your screen? We're going to take you there, that's what we're going to do. This, kindly brought to us by Andy the Lens, telling me that there's a real old school, but not old school, old school 50s garage. This much looks more like old school 80s garage. Just like there with old metal signs it's a Bosal exhaust system sign there and look at that exhaust fitted while you wait and look at the sort of the grime and the dust and the real original features on this building look at that raked back window set up there and this brutal concrete uh, arrangement for the waiting room it's incredible really isn't it well, it's not far from me, so I'm going to jump in Bramble and go downtown and check it out. It's on Bakeup Road. It's an, uh, an exhaust fitting place, MOT garage. Just thought it'd be good to go and just have the car parked in front. And you could probably get it to look like an old dated photo, this, because there's no modern features as such on the frontage of it. Okay, it's just got that feel of that grimy dusty drive-in garage exhaust fitting place i'd like to park out the front or maybe just park here if they'll let me get a shot of that and just take you downtown and check it out and after that we're going to carry on on the road join up on the motorway network and i'm hoping to get you to manor park classics for this film let's hope we can do that so we'll jump in bramble we're going to be connecting the uh, tripod mounts up to the car we don't want to be Filming and driving, there's been some complaints. So, uh, yeah, I agree, actually, what you're saying about that. I think we should always have the camera most of the time mounted. Let's go downtown to bake up and check this old school garage out. Can we do it? Will it rain? Probably will. But what can you do? This is a lockdown. This is a Friday night. I've got to bring you, I've got to bring you your entertainment. You're fixed. Whether we get views or not, we've got to, the show must go on, folks. Let's get down here and check it out. A quick fuel stop before we get on the road for this bake up and rotten stall old school garage gig. Before we do, we get some fuel, but look at this, it's the future's right in front of you, folks. An 8 bay electric charging station. I think I might have covered this before. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's an 8 bay. The future's arrived. There's nothing there for us. Not unless we get a electric motor under the hood. There ain't out there for us. Look at that. The future is arriving. It's in the post. It's coming. Dear me, what are we ever gonna do when the world goes electric? Let's get some fuel. We'll get you on the tripod and uh, we'll get out on the road. Let's go and see that garage. You're in. Project Bramble, by the way. A few light flashes to tell us to fill up. That's why. You are on the road with Bramble. I'm going to give you a bit of motorway driving as it happens, as we are. So we're going to join the M6. Let's zip up, boot up, badge up and get ready to go. Let's see how good the drivers are today. RNA floor in there carving us up like a shish kebab. On to the M6, slightly northbound at first. Apply power, low power. With a kick down. Oh, with a kick. There's a big truck in the way. <laughs> I'm running out of road, folks. No, we're fine. We'll see some drivers here. Who's picking up a rattle? I'm not picking up a rattle somewhere. That's new, that. It's got to be something in the cabin. Picking up a rattle somewhere? We don't like rattles. Who is that? Where are you? Oh, 
there's not much we can do about that. We're gonna to have to investigate. Rattles tend to bleed in, so I'm breaking the rules. I shouldn't be doing the Red Bull. It's too much sugar, but I need a hit. I need a hit of the Amber Nectar.
Mel's coming up the M65. This could be an anti-climax, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed that little motorway clip. Seemed to be pretty smooth on the motorway there, no problems. Just reasonably quiet, of course. All our appointments are made. Our Manor Park appointment is also made. These are meetings which can't take place. I don't need to justify it. I'm not gonna. I'm not doing any harm. police can try and prove it in court. Got a life to live, thank you. I'd love to know where that rattle is done. Going across some of the moors now. Rotten stall coming up. Aslinden I mean. These are nice driving roads but you can't really gun it because it's speed cameraed up now. I think this uh, territory features on some earlier films. Just over that hill is really where we're going.
that second uh, choke is opening all the way down, I'm wondering if the accelerator is actually pulling that choke carburetor all the way open. I've got a feeling that it's not quite pulling it. It's going to have to be investigated. Traffic delay on your route is now one minute. New arrival time 2.15 p.m. Yeah. You are still on the fastest route. Yeah, so really, you know, any, any ideas? We've got the same, we've got the same inlet manifold, the same carburetor, the same air intake, air filter pan. Uh, I know Ruby's got a K and N, but it, this was before before Ruby even had the K and N. This was evident. Unless my air filter on this one's clogged, but it's a new one. I could try running it without an air filter. You're just not getting that induction sound and I'm not getting the performance. It'll do 70, 80, 90 alright, but it doesn't get there like Ruby does. The only difference, both FR30 Kent cams, as far as I know they're both dialed in the same. The only difference is that this hasn't got the timing distributor, the H&H &H one. But I wouldn't have thought that would make that much difference, not to the induction sound. Sounds just like it's not getting the air into it. Thirteen minutes ago, and then we're straight to Manor Park. What a day! So a Friday night then. Onto your second drinks by now, I hope. Quaff away and type away, as usual on our Friday night live chat. Quaff and type, everybody. Quaff and type. Are you okay? This is Pete C from Courtney in the City, and these are my road trip films. Did you enjoy the Ghost Town series? Do you enjoy getting out and about with Pete C? Answers in the text box there. Is it time for a wash wipe? Who wants the hot wash wipe? Shout out for the hot wash! Beatsy's painted in hot wash! <laughs> Are you enjoying the lockdown? No, of course not. Does this help through the lockdown? Answers on the postcard, please, again. Down into the dip we go! Little bit of negative G there. No, positive G, positive G. It's half a G there. A bit of air there as we lift up. Ambulance on the right hand side. Still in the 50 zone, but we'll drop to 40. Be a little bit prudent. We're on the A6177. Grain, we're on the Grain Road. The Grain Road. The famous Grain Road. Who wants the wash wipe? Who wants the hot wash wipe? Um, I'm priming the uh, hot wash. Incoming rain now as we get into the hills and the valleys. The hot wash now primed, so what's happening now is it's heating the, the vessel, the heated vessel that's just behind the dash. It takes uh, 30 seconds or so to heat up. I can tell when it's done it because the amp gauge flips back in. Although it does pulse it, it doesn't draw continuously, it'll pulse, pulse less and less until it reaches its temp. It's pretty quick once it's sort of done its first boot up. We'll engage auto, wipe, some road works here, the holding arms on the right hand side for any spotters out there just checking that you're still on from time to time I'll just flip round. Do you know what it's actually safer in my opinion to be holding the camera here I think that's safer. Why? I think because you're checking that the suction mount is all alright, now really that's down to me, I'm not making any excuses, there are none, another ambulance there, those ambulances I think are going back, heading back to Blackburn, oh Peugeot 205, a little 205, well, little, a 205 there, a D, was it a D-Reg, very faded paint just parked up, we missed that, sorry about that, a Peugeot, is that a Supra as well there? Like hitting a few classics here into a little valley. We go down into 
Rotten, no, not Rotten Store, Has, Haslinden now, we're in Haslinden now, under the M66, where we had the fire. So, just that road you see ahead of you there, we might be going on it. We might be going on it, we are. We're doing it. We're doing it, we're doing it. We're doing a fire, we're gonna go past the fire. Fire! Fire! Or a wash! Whoops! I missed, I missed that. I'm going manually through the gears there. Didn't knock it back up. Auto wash! On to the 66. Let's just hope we don't. Oh, it's straight back off again. We're hopping on, we're hopping off. The Todd Morton. The Todd Morton. Away we go again. A little pop there in Alan Bullen's territory now. Watch out. It's not actually his living area, but uh, Alan Bullen is a, a veteran of the roads around here. Alan Bullen, one of our Mark Free contacts and friends. Heading to Helmshaw, A681. Anybody recognise the territory? Big C called Tina City, keeping you rough, ready, and driving. Nothing like the sporty experience that Ruby gives, but we endeavour to get that. We're going to get it. See, listen for the roar. There isn't one. Just flat. We're flat. Flat, flat, flat. Something's not right. And I've, I've gently eased it in. You might say, well, you. You've had the car on the road for ages now, but gently, one step at a time, as you slowly iron out little bits, it's now time to start looking at the performance side of the car. We're happy with the handling, panel gaps, the way the door's bedded in, all those things that we kept going through. Now, really, it's time to start honing and getting that tuning just right. I mean, the timing <clears throat> is right as far as I can see. There's no pinking and it takes over lovely it just it seems like it's starved of air that's my feeling on this and that's that's why the clue is in the sound as most fault finding 90 percent observation still on checking you're still on still on checking you're still on are we talking to myself i think A road trip for Friday night. Had a chance to chat. Mobile chat. Auto wipers doing their job. See, I've had to do nothing at all. Normally now I'd be flicking across. Swampy's not got them and once you've not when you've been used to those autos. A real pain in the ass. I mean, intermittent's not bad either. You can flip up for intermittent, and most people, if you do want to do a mod, suggest the bare minimum. To, well, it's a bit adventurous doing auto wipers, rain sense, but intermittent is a very good upgrade. Cheap, easy to do, and saves you flicking across to that switch. I fuller, fuller, can get out backwards. I fully recommend auto wipe. Here's a tricky little turn a sort of sharp right I don't know if I should be getting in this lane he's just done the crop behind me was just about to carve me up he's gone over the cross hatches I think I was entitled to make that move luckily he braked he she he she braked it's a little bit of a, a sort of boomerang round here sharpish and then back out again he can catch you out that's a tricky little junction there so boomerang ourselves round, check in, check in, sweep out to the left hand lane and then another sharp round, avoiding the bus stop now, bringing in, checking that mirror on that side, green on the filters, good to go, check in because I don't know the roads, two heavy flowing rivers on the left hand side joining together, going past a mill, very heavy volume of water flow there I noticed. This be Todd Morden Mill. No, it's not Todd Morden Mill. Uh, this is uh, 
Aslind and Mill, perhaps. Harnessing that water, no doubt, in the old days, I would have thought. A, I think there's a water course on my left hand side. Lambert's Mill, okay, so that's. Unless Lambert's Mill. No, that might hoop back round to Lambert's Mill. Water on both sides. No, Satnav says water only on one side. Powering that mill. Some interesting features. Bit of heat on the feet. The feet are getting cold. An old school garage on my right hand side, but not old school enough. You know? We're only two minutes away now. I think this is Rotten Store. It's got to be Rotten Store. Farms looking very tired, finished, poured it up and gone for the Ashwood Farms. Don't know what them two ladies are doing. We're very close now to our destination. Could it be an anti climax? Certainly give me a wet photography shoot, which won't necessarily impede it that much. Watch him there. And then straight on to Manor Park for that Vauxhall collection. I'm hoping I can get that in on tonight's film as well. Here it is, Rossendale Exhaust. It is extent, it exists, there's nowhere to park, it's going to be a tricky one. Busy road, busier than anticipated, have to do a U turn back. But so we've seen it, and it is as it is on the tin. Should be able to drive in, it's U turn time. Although I should have gone right there, really easily done when you don't know the territory unfortunately for me it's a busy road but the building is extent it's not going to be as easy to photograph as I thought it's going to be tricky this might not work let's have a look anyway could we be abandoning this mission could this be no good is Pete just just being too ambitious with these projects I mean thanks to Andy the lens for this one by the way I hope Andy's watching. Andy put me onto this. I can definitely see what he means about the, the building. It is as it as he says. It's just that this road is I really thought it was a quiet road. There's no, there's just no way. Where is everybody going? It's so busy. I mean I, I'm looking in my rearview mirror, it's just a constant stream now. I just don't know how I can do this. There's just no let up. Oh, after this truck, we've got it, we've got it, we've got it, got it, after this one with the yellow letters. We're in. Just about pull in. I can pull in, so it's not too bad. Wow, that is grubby. That is grubby. Uh, yeah. Not a lot for us and a lot of activity. The sign which I saw on the street view, the metal sign has gone. Nice Michelin sign there. The metal sign has gone. There was a really nice metal sign, like rusted down exhaust sign, like a stove enamel type. That's gone. I've had some re the brickwork's been redone. But uh, that is what we we're talking about. Can you see that? I'll get the camera off the. Uh, tripod now and just show you that that waiting room there and that those rake back windows it's very I could probably walk along that side of the road park there and get it let's just see sometimes when the mechanics spot a classic they'll sometimes be quite receptive and friendly they're happy to see a bit of a change of scenery and they might come over we'll just see we'll play this by ear but PC's gonna just try and get at least I'd like to pull into there, park there, stand. I need to, really need to be about halfway in the middle of that road, really. I haven't got the lens set up to get this. Let's turn the heaters off. I haven't got the lens set up to get this. A lot of pedestrians and everything. Look at all this traffic. Anyway, that corner, you might be able to see it. I'm going to take you off so you can have a look. Hold on. That's the building I'm telling you about. 
it just looks like a time warp building there's a lot of people waiting it's quite dark and I don't really want to film until I've, I've, I've spoke to the guy there and I, but I don't really want to park here I need to go make contact really and just see what they're like because a car looks like it's coming out so we'll just see Pete's going to try and do some sweet talking the boys say yes so we're just going to loop round and park down that side ramp the boys don't mind and it is proper old school look at that general tyre sign there let's get in get out of the way quick because they're busy lads but it's old school it's as it, as it was as it is as it looked car coming in now so we've got to be quick it's busy wow this is great fun <laughs> The office there with these rake back pillars. He says it was an old mill building, okay? It's got all the stuff. So here he is, and then letting us film. So we did it. We got what we needed. That general tyre sign's really nice, look. That old steel general tyre sign there, look. Just don't see anything like that anymore. Very good, old school Union Garage, look at that embossed writing on there, that's nice, see that, beautiful stuff and the old school waiting room, the Michelin signs in the back, I've got a nice Bridgestone sign at the top, very nice, a Dunlop sign up there and the nice misty windows, Andy's got the eye for this car sits nicely in the foyer of this place apologies for the traffic noise but it's just the way it is sorry about that, just getting the camera stable for the shots old school I break in the traffic then so we quickly take the opportunity Yeah, and they don't want don't want your, your money well oh, no, they, they do yeah but they don't be on a handbag it's not on a handbag and then we had that in a while back some of the cars that have been in that's nice isn't it this jaguar x gear 220 yeah you don't see many of them around yeah, we one of them in there. wow where's that cortina again uh, this garage has been oh there it is yeah scroll through that wow Right, so it's NWB 595L. Anybody know that one? Wow. Okay, he got Cortinas here. Nice, thanks for that. I'll go and see John, see what he says. Yeah, that will work. Because it's an old mill, isn't it? Yeah, originally a mill. Main wow. Ford, main Ford dealers That's years ago. Ford, main Ford dealers? What was the name of the, the Ford dealers? Union Garage Company. Ah, I've just, door. yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw the plaque. The wow. Look at that, let's get a picture of that. Sorry mate, it's getting your way. No, no, this is just no, all my, up, right up my street, all this. Look at that, it's a BP sign. Yeah. They're worth like, all them pumps are like going for like two grand each, them pumps. Well, tell me that, I chucked them in skip years ago. Oh, <laughs> that was the case, isn't it? I know, it's, 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 it, it probably, it probably um, <laughs> at the time, they had not kicked off, you know. Oh, that's, that's what do you think the mill building used to make? Still next to it, slippers. Slippers, slippers yeah. Yeah. so shoes and slippers, yeah. yeah. Wow, it's proper old school, isn't it? These are the old the old waiting room sign and this this 70s panel in there, look at that. Yeah. Remember that stuff, you put panel pins on it, John. No, that's not here, that's, in, that's some, a different one. That's garage up there with a car. Yeah, I can see. Distance, was that lit up, that sign? Looks, Looks like, like it, yeah. yeah. Back then. 
Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> like, because things like this are, are disappearing, you know, and then it's all like modern stuff now, isn't it? It's never the same. Yeah, so. It's like all the memories are here, aren't they? Some of them. The old waiting room sign, you come Most in. Of my life's in here. <laughs> wow. How long, <laughs> you, how, how long have you been here, John? Since half seven this morning. No, I mean, work it, yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, working here. Have you? Yeah, back in the, the old British Telecom bell, the proper old ringing bell. Yeah. The inquiry sign, Dunlop sign there. It's got it all. Yeah, real, really old school. Yeah, so you have had a few Cortinas in there. Oh, I've had a few, yeah. Um, exhaust on them, what would they last a couple of years? And if you were lucky. Yeah, I've got... Guaranteed them for a year, 18 months, they were knackered, weren't I've got stainless on that one now. Yeah. I've had it's enough of... Loads of them Cortinas. Yeah, and that's the old... Unless it might three, it might four, and that. Same one on Mark 3, well, 4 yeah. and 5, innit? Yeah. Got the pit there. The old that side of the garage used to be wrecked out with exhaust systems, like a yeah. 10 14 system. Yeah. Wow. They last for 10 years on a car now, don't they? Yeah. Say. That's all I mean. But everyone that worked on 80s, 70s, and 80s stuff coming up to retirement age and things. I saw that before. What? Yeah. Okay. Get, get a picture of that. Look at that. That might be in that might be in my book, John. That yeah. because I've got a list of all the Ford it's dealers. I've been chipped off for some reason. Yeah. Well, I, went to I, I wonder what kind of cars they've been selling then. If it's going back to fifties, you think? There were Ford agents. Yeah. There were Simpson agents, Lambos, and then it last we were Ford dealers. Ford yeah. Dealers. Well, I know one of your lads seems shown an orange Cortina on there. Yeah. yeah. That you've got one of your customers got one. Yeah. I might know him because I'm, I'm the press secretary for the club, so yeah. I might know him. I don't know. Well, it's been great. I better get moving on. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Shame about that metal sign because I saw it uh, on yeah. the Google Earth and someone's knocked it off, haven't they? That yeah. anim enamel sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're worth like 100 quid. Yeah, I know a lot of them, though, yeah. Especially like the rare ones. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's like proper, isn't it? That? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, well, if you do come to a tie and sell up, remember some of the stuff like that's worth good money. Nice to meet you, John. Okay, Appreciate it. Then. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, right, we're gonna go. Cheers, buddy. For that. Yeah, the old school MOT testing station. The guys have been great. He had a quick look there. Four dealers of all things. Let's get back on the road and get down to Manor Park. See you in a sec. Back on the road. Folks, how good was that? Those guys were really kind. John, the owner there. And it used to be a Ford garage. Wow. So I've connected you back up to the windscreen. We've now leave that garage. You're on face tracker, so it's going to move around a little bit. But you best bear with it. It should keep us framed up. We're going to get back on an hour now to Manor Park. I'm still near the Rotten Stall area. We're going to join this road. We're going to... Come with me then, keep on this journey. I've got some 80s on the radio. Yazoo at the moment. Careful now, concentrate on the roads, watch that car. Okay. Heat it down just one click so you don't get as much noise. Fresh air vent open. We'll go for intermittent wipe for now. Uh, 51 minutes to Manor Park, watch this car. Okay. Okay, signs up M65, A682, showing on the sat-nav. Let's have a look which lane we want for this. We've got a choice. I think it's this one. My feet are cold from the garage floor. This is a little bit tricky. I may have picked the wrong lane here. We're going to watch this orange going through on orange. Okay, we sort of want to sort of head off in the middle. Tricky one, that Manchester is correct. Here we go. We're going M66 then, which makes sense. That'll take us onto the, I would have thought the 62, which would then hit the 56. If we would go, we're probably gonna take us on the ring road. Um, it's probably gonna take us past the Trafford Centre that way and then join the 56, I would have thought. Let's see what it does. Making sure you're still on, yes you are. You've got a little bit of wobble on the camera. I'm just looking at it there, just the way it's mounted. I may pull in and re-correct you. You're going to see a bit more of this kind of like footage after we take the heed, the advice given to not use the camera while you're driving. I understand that totally. I have got the chest camera. I haven't really, but I have, if you know what I mean. 
Merc behind me, a powerful one. I think it's a uh, two. I think it's a new SL style. It's, probably, it's not going to do the overtake because we're in a 50, and we're going to lose that lane anyway. Looks like a pretty beefy Mercedes behind me. Don't know if you can see it in the, the wing mirror. Probably not. So I'm going to sort of. I want you to be driving with me, everybody. I want you to be with me. So we'll, we'll put you up at the road in a sec. We'll get you reset up. Showing the instrument panel and my driving position. I can't do the cruise demo. We've seen it enough times anyway. We lose that lane, then go single. We join the 66. We're going to go go past the the place of the fire. I'll try and keep you on for that. Some filtering in from the left hand side. Check in. Building up speed now. M60 next. Sixteen minutes to Manor Park, making good progress. M6 approaching M56. Pick up for M56. Everything went smooth. BMW with super brights, and it's a, a BMW sandwich. It's a Cortina sandwich. Two BMWs. I don't know if that's my fault or not. Really, if it is, I apologise wholeheartedly. That's a Cortina sandwich, two, bi two bits of BMW. We are looking good and on the road, so don't you worry about that. Park shortly you see the fiddlers ferry cooling towers on the horizon there just to your right hand side and those familiar road testing roads around the the vicinity of Manor Park your classic car one-stop shop specialists let's go and see what Sam Roger and everybody else has got in store Let's have a look at our Vauxhall collection and, and any other car that might take our fancy. Don't think I'll be doing any road driving of the vehicles today. I don't think, anyway, we'll see. Or maybe we'll get them to take us out. Maybe we'll do that. See if we can persuade someone masked on, of course. Because only one person needs to wear the mask. If you're in someone else's car, would you both wear a mask or would just one person? Stupid load of rubbish gotta be done but uh, when the science proves nothing that's when I don't agree with it so what I'm saying is two in a car one in a mask spot the mistake see you in a sec I think we've done good time there really pleased with that journey all the way from Bake Up to Daresbury Runcorn for Manor Park Manor Park uh, Busy building up the uh, the brand, sounding all corporate now, aren't we, folks? Been told that uh, I'm a salesperson. No, I don't think I'm a salesperson. Well, we shall see. The uh, buildings are all closed. That's uh, because of the situation. It's appointments only, and I have an appointment. No classics. Not a classic in sight. Let's go downtown and check it out. Folks, we're here. Fans of Cortina City, Friday night fun. Get ready to feast your eyes on Friday night fun and festivities. I am like, well, I'm not going to say kid in a candy shop. I find it's too easy to say. Let's just say it's like home alone. There's nobody around. Just me to walk just me and the 
the aircon units to walk around and there's so much we just don't know where to start but I reckon that we start something that you can connect me to and that was remember when I took this car out the 1300L Go Paris Capri is in an undercover we took that out for a test drive if you scroll back through the Cortina City videos it was the closest I could get to a Cortina because there are no Cortinas in here that was nice so it's good to see the Capri again okay and then basically I'm just in a sea of cars and I don't know where to start you will do a lot better job than I will of identifying what's around I'll have a rough go I'll start with this I think this was one of the last Jags I had a Jag, I had the V12 HE, which was high efficiency, I think that's what they named it. This one, I think, is called the Celebration Jag. And I think the Celebration ones were done later on. I think they, they messed around with this area here, if I recall. I, wasn't this window made a little bit bigger on these? The buttress has always been the same shape, I think. I also did hear a rumour that the buttresses were something to do with the fact that they were going to put the engine mid-engined on this then I, I, I read something that countered that and said it was part of the styling queue so there's a mixed opinion on them buttresses I've read two different things about them over the years so this one's in a kind of like champagne gold colour and um, whether it's been painted up or not we're not going to really know it looks like it to me there but a lot of cars have we might get a drive in this one that's that's later that uh, that badge it's open now they used to call this oatmeal I don't know if they still call it oatmeal I had a, an XJR and that was called the oatmeal interior I think these are really really nicely appointed you just saw my Jag uh, sorry my, not my Jag my um, you just saw my oh Rolls Royce video where I I wondered at the walnuts so it's time to wonder at the walnut again is it real walnuts we don't really know and XJS is always gonna be plush the thing I like about the XJS is it's very much like a cockpit you sat right in like you're in a sort of Spitfire you know with the, with the V12 in front of you nicely cocooned in the bolsters of the oatmeal trim and on this car it all looks very smart indeed bolster wear minimal this hasn't got the gate shifter that I was used to on, on, my, on the later Jags it's just straight back is that an overdrive switch or something we've got sports and drive perhaps I don't know ah <sighs> smells fresh fresh and clean looks it looks fantastic inside do like these just because the sort of it's the only other car I've talked about a p5 but this is the only other car I'd consider if I had enough room to have in the collection as a toy always thought these blades were very close to the edge I remember that on, on my one whacking whacking the edge of the screen as it goes perhaps they're slightly an inch lot too long those blades don't know minor detail Glad to see it without the quad lamps. I don't think they looked right. So if you want to check out that, isn't that nice? And a nice example. Paint looks pretty good. The colour, like a champagne gold, as I said. A couple of little marks, stone chip marks, but on the whole, you know, we want to start going around feeling the arches. We just haven't got time, but it's initially feeling really good to me. We haven't time for that. Let's move on to something else. And I know you're waiting to see the Vauxhall collection. So perhaps we could break this video down. We could do a revisit here. Just give you a quick walk around of the cars. We have been here before. We've not really looked at the vehicles though. And do you want me again swallowing the encyclopedia? I just want to feast your eyes. I'm going to be telling you bum information and then you're saying, Pete, you don't know what the hell you're on about. Would you have a, a, a V12 E-Type? Would you have a Would you have an E-Type rather? I would. Again, I might have just said that I'd only have the Jag and the P5, the Rover P5. But 
No, I can I can see see this, and also at the C one that we saw at twenty eight state cars. Now then, this I always thought this is a TR six, but this is a special one. I always thought those wheels looked out of proportion on the car. What do you think? They just look too big. It looks like he's he's just someone's. Um, just fitted two big wheels on it a Bentley then now you're moving up into layer cake territory welcome to the layer cake son this is layer cake territory give me are you giving me a continental let's just have a look what you're giving me tell me what you're giving me everybody it says Bentley it doesn't tell me what it is so we need you Bentley you car buffs to give poor old Pete C here, the idiot who doesn't know what he's on about, to tell him what the hell car it is. What model? Why? Debadged. No description. But just at the moment, I'm on a bit of a sort of interior walnut trip. I'm just tripping on walnut. Oh, I don't like that blue. Whew. Smells like a florist's in here for some reason. Whoa, did you hear that door close then? Bloody hell. It does smell like, it does smell like the local florist shop for some reason. Now, look at that. Ooh, lots of, lots of lovely gauges and things. Just sitting in it, the seats feel like velvet. Wow. The wheel looks wrong, so straight that wheel, does, you know, you've got to agree, that wheel does not look right for this car. Let's get an interior light on, that was flat as a pancake. That just doesn't, it just doesn't suit it. Okay, that's a nice touch. Cover your radio up, that's, but <laughs> Citroen did that, nothing new there, Bentley. Look at this stick shifter here, sort of James Bond button on top of you. Half expect to, to jettison the passenger. Head first out the roof there when you press that one. Heat it all round, climb it all round. Lots of dials and, and switches for all sorts. A cubby hole here, although I hate that word, for your mobile phone. For your car kit, your mobile phone, that's how dated we are. Factory fit, slide and tilt. As you as you said as that you <laughs> don't look backwards as you'd expect. How often do you get the chance to sit in a Bentley? Oh, look at that LCD screen. I wonder if that's the sat nav. Oh no, it's Alpine. It's a sound system, and it also probably is the sat nav. So that just pops up there. It doesn't seem to really want to do it. Sort of resisting all attempts to pop up. It's it just doesn't want to. It's just resisting. The hell, that's like on, on an aeroplane when you pump the fuel to prime prime your carburetor on, on a Cessna Cessna C140. Whoa, we're about to take off. Okay, I can't spend too much time in the Bentley, but nice, feels nice. It feels like you just sat in, in some velvet chocolate, but it hasn't melted on the seat of your pants. Very nice indeed. Don't like the shape of the seats, and we've got bolster wear there. Not enough food been applied to that, but they are, they are extremely comfortable. That is a well appointed interior, but the wheel looks horrendous. And I actually don't like the dash top, you should have kept that either black or all cream, I think. Nice action though. Let's try that again. Doesn't make the slow motion click, my Cortina can beat this, I think. No, my, my, my two-door GXL can beat. I can beat the Bentley. It's nice, though. Roller there, we're not going to cover it. Because we did a roller last Friday. Suffice to say, another shadow. <laughs> all right, all right. You win, you win. Come on, Pete, get in the roller. What a lovely, deep, light Jupiter red on the Mark IV, Corti. Whoa. What the? No, it can't be factory. Surely not. Abloy locking system. No. That's factory. Jupiter red metallic paint. 
I'm giving you Cortina colours now. Some lazy buckles there. Look. Monster seats. Just monster seats. I mean, you know, Gran's armchair has been mounted on a chassis. Come on, Granny. Your armchair's been mounted on a, a big iron chassis. This. Oh, and again, again. The smellometer is on. Oh, that's a bit clunky. The smellometer is on. Bloody hell, the door's... Where'd you grab hold of it? Uh, try there. Well, Rolls-Royce fit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do this. People are trying to sell these cars. <laughs> this ain't good. We got it in the end. Okay, let's switch the lights on. Dead. Ah, oh, it's got a better smell than the Bentley. And it's got that electronic transfer of your uh, gear selector rather than it being a mechanical linkage, so it's effortless. It smells lovely, different dash than the... Uh, it's got those fuel pumps again there. We pump enough fuel in and we're off. We know the battery's dead because it's not quarter to four. No, the battery's not. The time clock's right. We have got power. It's just, you need a key to do it. No problem, that's uh, something we can explore another time, but that mirror's nice in chrome. Your silver shadow dash. Let's go and see the meat, because I know you can't wait. You just, you just, these are just like token gestures, aren't they? There's an Aston Martin there as well, look. There's a nice bike here too. Ducati bike there, look. That's a beauty. Like your bikes. Look what we got here on the Aston. Look what we got here. And look what we got here. We keep it Ford. A nice Targa 70, 73. Are we on the 73? I had a 964. It's 1973. Yeah, L. The 2.4. Targo, your solid, your solid back. There's a rare one with the uh, plastic seats. I took a hammer in, but as as is, a sort of beigey colour. Your Porsche, collectible piece, always an investment if you look after them. Be really careful to store those nicely. Missing a side light bulb at the back, I think. Nice, nice that. This XR3i convertible, maybe we need to test this. I mean, I know these cars quite well because of my Ford Orion was a similar setup. You know, it's just almost exactly the same dashboard. In fact, it probably is identical to the Orion setup. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. We can look at that again. There's your dog leg alloys, fit on a lot of cars. Well, they were taken off a lot of XR3s and fitted on a lot of cars, a lot of Ford cars. It's a tiny little unit. What have we got on the clock on the XR3i convertible? I need my hair cutting. What have we got? A hairdresser's car with a haircut. No. I guess for 83,000 on that one, no haircuts. 100 points for that. Big beast, and I half expect to see this on Wivnall and I going outside Penrith Tea Rooms, although that wasn't a roller, but we can just see Uncle Monty now going to purchase Penrith Tea Rooms and fire everybody. Oh, now then, now then, retrimmed. Oh, someone's done a hell of a job looking after it. Has to be retrimmed. It's too good not to have been retrimmed. Again, granny seats ready to whisk you away. Now this has got the mechanical linkage. I was telling you about the other one with the electronic control, that's mechanical. You can hear it operating there. Spitfire type rear view mirror. Never been in one of these before. I like that four gauge clock there. Can't quite pick it up on the camera. I like that clock. That's the same time clock as in the shadow we just looked at. Rev counter sort of works backwards on this. That's nice. We've got a a bread tray there. 
a cocaine tray there. I'll push away nicely, no mirror on it. We've got, what else we've got? A big cubby hole here to put a can of monster energy drink in, which you're gonna need if it breaks down if you push it. What have we got? Double click. We've got a one-two buckle on my shoe. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rattle at dawn. We're in, we're in, we're in. So sideways on your local roundabout, the Silver Cloud free. Sideways, just, just sideways, smoking the big Michelin X War One radials, just, just bellowing from, bellowing from the arches. The Silver Shadow free. Got to look at the Aston another time. BMW, nice, but we've no time for that. We'll come back on to the BM. Audi is Quattro. I think Fuzz, that's the one Fuzz drove. So there's a good video of that on Manor Park's site if you want to look at it, if you're interested in the Quattro. So I won't double cover it. Tell me it's the Quattro. It is the Quattro. I won't cover that. There's a Ducati sort of space frame endoskeleton type bike in banana yellow. The Italian bike designers, of course. A GTI Golf. Looking good. Again, we'll come back to that. Moggy Miner might have my name on for a car review. Who knows? You're going to have to vote it in. But I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, this is more British than a pillar box. The Miner 1000 Tora. Retrimmed. New hood. English cream white and um, claret seats. Someone's took the dashboard out, and there must be one of those, you remove it for nighttime security and push the speedo back in. Oh no, it's over there. Okay, Moggy's worthy. This looks, this looks tidy. Now these were, a lot of these survived. They're just so, they're a great car for a beginner. The cheeky, happy, parts are available, insurance not bad. I think they're worth an investigation into the classic car world for a beginner. Perhaps it doesn't have to be the Tora, but a Moggy Miner, what do you reckon? Does it do it for you? Millions made. I think they did some special edition ones when they reached the million mark. Did they colour colour them up in um, purple? Some other various colours to celebrate the world's ever first millionth car. Or British first, British millionth car. We don't go here because these get too close to the bumper. So, no for the Range Rover. Now then, you know this is the cream. You know this is the cream. You know this is what I've been promising you. But we'll leave that. We save the best till last. You know what it is. You know what's coming. This one is very famous on the, the Brighton runs. You might have seen this. Recognise the Reg. JNM 400. It's always on the Brighton run, that one. This is the first 100 mile an hour car. Don't know what it is, but um, I was reliably informed this is the first vehicle to hit the 100 in production terms, at least. I would have thought that means in production terms. It's a big, it's a big Vauxhall. And look at the beautiful Griffin on the front there. What a lovely feature. So rather than try and get it correct about the cars and all the specs. What's the point of spouting out a dictionary when you can go on Wikipedia and do it? Just so that I sound like a smart ass. I'd rather tell you how the cars make me feel and what I like about them, whether that's little OCD details or strange quirky anomalies, rather than this did X, Y, Z. Who the hell cares? Go on another channel for that. I'm Pete C. This is Cortina C. And that's a Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very happy Griffin. And this is the rampant position. You can see in um, emblem terms and coats of arms and stuff. You would dick, dick, pay. Yeah, back here backwards. You would dick, dick, I can't, I can't say it. I've, I've done it again. Depict different tones or aggressive tones, passive tones by the angle and the, the talons here. Not on, let's say on Griffins, but... Certainly on coats of arms when you see the lions. Griffins may be different. Griffins, I think, are mythical creatures and beautiful ones they are. Look, let's get right in on that because that's a lovely work of art. If it was me, I'd be polishing that up a little bit more, but they'd probably only do so much, you know. That is absolutely 
I'd, I'd love to know how they made that. Was it cast, engraved? Must have been cast, mustn't it? I think it's fantastic. Just look at that beautiful sculpture on the front of that car. I wouldn't like to hit it though. So let's say a pedestrian does, well, if I hit it, that's going to open up from my third rib up basically the middle of my rib cage that so that's just gonna remove most of my internal organs anyway and and spread them across there ironically a bit like a sort of surgeon's uh, mortuary bench but not so it's very uh, highly polished bench there they're going down to the wheels the wire wheels they're just wire wheels i love wire wheels I think these are fast release, sort of fast release things that you undo and then the wheel falls off. I might be wrong. A very long air, air refill tube there, like what you get on a life jacket, you know, and you can flight and top up if you want to, but there's no whistle. Very nice. And at the back, we've got, I'm going to get you as low down as we can for this. Look at the, the air, look at the differential at the back. Now you wouldn't think a car that old, the differentials haven't really changed that much if you look. Wow. And that's the fuel tank, there's your drain the plugs for the tank. But you wouldn't think a differential. I don't know, I don't know what I was expecting to see, but... And it's got Cortina drum brakes on the back, look. Although these are 12 inch, they're gonna stop you. It's a bit of fun, that. I think Giles owned this one. Now, is that a horn ring? No, it's not. This is some kind of control. Look, it, oh, yeah. Wow. It makes a nice clicking noise. Very tactile. Brass, solid brass. If things get bad, you could always weigh that in. The way things are going, I might well have to. Got lots of controls now. Are those real? Are those real? Uh, those real dials on the clock. Let's go and fuck off. Just real dials on the clock there. Look. Wow. Look. Wow. Look at that. My new engineering is so detailed. But we're going to run out of time, which means I'm going to have to come back to an absolutely beautiful car. Look at this droopy Snoopy. It's a droopy Snoopy. That that finish. Tell me what you know about these cars. Look at that. It, it was very futuristic at the time to have that. Even done by Triplex for the light, the light reflectors, and the, um, the light protectors there. Similar to the RS2000 where they kind of like had that extra Snoopy front on the front end. It's not a Farina. It's a Forenza. It's not a Forenza. It's a Farina. It is a Forenza. And it's KO on the end ridge. Look at that. This is from the Vauxhall Heritage Collection. Is that not a fantastically space stage looking piece of kit? Slight feeling of the Cortina there or the Capri. Look, look at it side on. A little bit of Caprina's happening at the back, do you not think? Half of me wants to just start jacking that up to get the Coke bottle shape. This is a beautiful car. It's my favorite so far. Two-tone seats looking like a velour insert on leather. Let's have a look whether that's factory or not. I don't know probably is that is Suede or velour. I think that feels like suede It's got a nice smell feels fresh Look at the interior so black roof lining on this Frenzer What's the mileage on this is it a low mileage machine in the heritage collection? Oh, it's up at 10,000. Is that real 10,000 is that real? Has it gone round? 10,232. There's a meeting on, so I've got to lower my voice. That's why I've gone quiet. And I think we've been called to go. That's a shame, because we never got up to the... We're going to have to jump across... Look, across! We're going to have to jump across to the Carlton. Sharpish. What do you think of the Forenza? I think it's fantastic. It looks very, very clean. Let's just have a look at the... Uh, Sort of any scuff damage or any paint damage down here by the sills. We're not out of time. Little bits of getting in and out chips. But has it had paint? No, that's not been touched. I don't think it has. I think that's the original paint. 
that's a nice look at the dash again got capri feel to the dash or the capri had a feel of the frenza i think this came after though so has got a little bit of capriciousness about it but it is beautiful in its own right i'm not trying to compare it to a capri at all are these original wax oil sealing plugs here is that an original decal if, if it is then the car is as it says that's nice that's nice that's a nice car that i've never seen one i've seen an fd victor which was beautiful this is great we're gonna to have to come back to the station wagon look at the massive webasto roof on there you open that up and there'll be that much you'll, you'll make a mini tornado creating that much vortex with that this is beautiful as well you know a quick look at this i'll come back to this one for you it's got a kind of pvc what the hell's that up there what is this is it like a, a light reflector oh no it's a wind deflector when the, when the sunroof's down of course it is Hey, I like the way the clock's up there. Look, nice. Everything's nice. Astra, GTE, B-Reg, a Manta in. We'll come, I say we'll come back to that. Here's the beast. Everyone's going to be applauding now. Pete's finally got round to it, but don't get me wrong. That's a nice piece, that. Love the silver. Love how tidy the car is. Love the look at it. It's a, it's, it must have been so spacey agey at the time when that come out. Just the styling of it there. I think the proportions on that are just right. Looks like a Capri Classic from here at certain angles, a Capri Classic feel. The estate will look at another time. I'm sorry about the estate for estate lovers, but look, it's here. The car the cops tried to ban. The fastest production road car of its time. The Lotus Carlton has arrived. You don't need me to ruin this experience by commenting on it. I'm just gonna let you feast your eyes on this. about that let's sit in tons of leg room the seats feel like Recaro seats I go right back plenty of room the Lotus badge there styled engineered by Lotus got that time timeless that time stamp feel about it it's just that's the materials that were available at the time to build dashboards with. This is what you've got. Speed up to 180. Bizarrely enough, just no tricks, no toys, just a stick on mirror. Pretty basically spec, but beautifully comfortable seats. Comes with its own whip antenna there. And if you've if you've a mistress also comes in handy a blanking panel for probably some kind of control equipment police radio perhaps this is nice can we lift the bonnet yes we can look click it goes electric mirrors velo on the inner of the panels some faux wood effect in plastic there the carlton paint looks good it's presented well, its mileage is 36,000, it's a low machine, part of the, the heritage collection at Vauxhall, on the K. A 92, 90 gives you H, J for 91, K for 92 around that time, perhaps am I right, look at those wheels. They're nice in their own right as well. This was a fast machine. I think they got... You don't need me to tell you the story because it's a world famous story about Vauxhall getting criticised for it being too powerful and sending out the wrong message. We did flip the bonnet, but I don't know where the release catch is. It's around here somewhere. There it is. We've got the release catch now. 
difficult when you're filming. We got it, we got it. It's a heavy bonnet, non servo assisted, non, non gas shock assisted bonnet. That's heavy, but look at the motor. Just got rocket ship written all over that thing. Fast. How's that for an engine bay? Do you like that kind of thing? Do you like Lotus Carlton? Rare cars, expensive cars, collectible cars, fast cars, nice cars. Did it take on the Sierra? You help me now with this because I don't know my facts on this stuff. I'm, I openly admit that. How did this fare up against the Cosworth? Answers on the chat box, please. Of course, we've got a crossover with Cortinas with the Lotus Cortina, Mark 1 and Mark 2. So there's a little bit of a tie in with Lotus. That Carlton is pretty special. I think you're going to agree. You'd like to have that in your collection. Just because of what it represents. It's just an era in time, a landmark as well for Vauxhall. I think it did them more good than bad with the publicity. I think they couldn't have gone wrong really. We'll look at the Manta again. And a whole new story connected with the Manta. There's a whole little Manta chapter we could go into. Forenza, we know, you know I was a fan of that. That's, that's my favorite, but I love the way that looks under the light. That silver's a nice colour. Look at the way the ride height's set. That's a nice, neat, compact ride height. Look at that, how that wheel's fitting in there for the ride height. I don't know if that's been lowered or not, but it looks just right. Proportions on that are all just perfect. I don't think I'd change anything. You know, would you have the lights uncovered? That's part of it, the droop snoop. That my favourite out of the collection. I'd like to look at the estate if I had more time, but unfortunately that is it. We ended on the Carlton for you. This is the Vauxhall Cars Heritage Collection. It's not open to the public, it's more for press reasons. Beautifully set up. They've got all the, uh, there's Lewis Hamilton because he, I think he learnt to drive in Vauxhalls. Hunt and Mr James Hunt there, the bottom. So the history of the, of the, uh, the company. Maggie Thatcher even have a go go herself. Look, Maggie hit the wheel. What she's up to, racing on down to shut another mine shaft. Oh, how similar to the Mark One Cortina did that look then? And then we've got plenty of info on the sides. Oh, I like the way they've done this, and they're just Manor Park are just uh, custodians of the collection at, at the moment. Um, there is other vehicles in the collection stored elsewhere. They're just looking after it, and it's for press reasons. It's not open to the, the general public. Okay. And then we've got some nice little original pieces here. Look, the demo engine with the cutaway parts. That's nice. I'd like to put my hand in that one, though. That's a, a blender mounted the wrong way. You could chop a melon, watermelon up with that in about two seconds. Totally masticate it. The way that a coil works with your, your um, field field coils, the coils that collapse, induce the field, create the spark, two different windings, creating a spark. It shows you how that works. There's the, the LT windings. Yeah, nice chrome plated clutch plate there. That would just be for demo reasons only. They'd never be. And look at that engine. That looks nice, doesn't it? That injection rail at the side there. Common injection rail there, don't know what engine that's out of. Vauxhall, Swindon, look at that donkey. Collectors will love stuff like this. In fact, if this was for, for me and it was Ford, I'd be jumping up and down. I'm, I'm almost jumping up and down after seeing that and that. I do like the, do like the Porsches, but I never like the way the back ends come out, but they're just good collectible pieces. Don't forget there's another E-Tab. E tab, E type hiding away. This is new in. Now they did different types, two plus two, but we'll call that a film for another time. It's over and out from Pete City. I've got to get back on the road. They're chucking me out. It's five o'clock. We've got to go. Hope you enjoyed. So I had to keep it low profile, low down towards the end, but we had a little trip round. We'll see you soon on Cortina City. We're going to wind it down now. Quaff away quick, type away quick because we're shutting down. It's over and out from Pete City, Cortina City. 
a kid in a candy store, of course. Don't forget there's a Sierra to pl play about with at some point. I'm going to be sent out in one of these cars. I don't know which one they're going to pick. They're going to put it up for votes. Everyone's going to say the Carlton, but unfortunately, we're boxed off in this area. So we're talking about our field of view here at Manor Park. And by the way, if you didn't know, Manor Park Classics, one-stop shop for everything classic car related. You're going to be finding out a lot more about Manor Park in future multimedia and social media posts. Keep your eyes peeled. I'll shove some links on my YouTube site. For now, we've got to leave. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon. Over and out. Let's hit the road in Bramble. Well, thanks for coming along with me on that journey there. And thanks to Manor Park for giving me the opportunity to do it. Also, thanks to um, Rotten Stall Tire and Exhaust. That's been a great day out. As usual, it rains every time. So miracle all my cars haven't rotted away. Well, you may say that they have. No, they're all quite mint. But if every time we're out, it's raining. It's lucky that we can go out. All appointments were made. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care anyway. Not about anybody else, but about common sense. And that's what I'm interested in, is just good old common sense. And make safe and informed decisions for myself and not put anybody else at risk, which is what I haven't done. This has been a great film to make and now I'm gonna to have to leave you so I told you to quaff and type get them lagers down your Chris Bradley shouting out now uh, in Blackpool there I Chris in Blackpool shouting out drinking till the last Wow we'll catch you all soon big shouts out to everybody and thanks for all your usual support comments it's chucking it down here auto wipers on full tilt heated seat full on it's cold it's january but just in a couple of weeks let's hope let's just really hope these uh we can get out of this mess and that things will brighten up for us all but let's just see what next week's friday film brings i hope that you enjoy it as much as i do try and share the links uh, we're trying to get the traffic up we're very quiet on YouTube at the moment so all links appreciated and no cat flap videos here and no swallowing encyclopedias either just tell it as it is we don't know what the hell we're talking about we'll catch you soon PC code since it give me a Cortina to restore I'll show you on that note I'll love you and leave you Bramble driving beautifully by the way a pleasure to drive I'm warm as toast here and all systems are go. Cruise on now, watch your dash folks, watch the birdie, watch the birdie. Sit back, relax, enjoy the uh, last few minutes. Passengers out the left hand side can see the remains of the right hand side wing. Over and out, PC. Good night everyone. Don't forget, a pint of water before you go to bed, some vitamin B will help combat any potential hangovers you may have but for those teetotalers well done i'm uh, salute you you teetotalers i really do stop rambling pete go to bed come on slowly come on then slowly it's got to end soon you know i wish i could have give you more on the carlton maybe next time i'll say you the last time good night for now over the fell wall viaduct we go You know, you know when I said it was the end of the film, I lied. Back in then, so what do you think? What a mission that was. And, you know, doesn't it always rain? But did you like the road trip to Manor Park? Did you like the, the motorway trip over, over the moors? Take me to the moors, over the moors. We went over the moors, Rossendale area. And Ruby, 
and Bramble when they go out, and Swampy, and Tina G, they take the hits. But, but, do you want to molly coddle the cars? Or do you want to drive them and, and enjoy your life while you can? Yes, there's a bit of a lockdown at the moment, but I don't think it's the status quo. It's, it's frightening to think that it might be, but I don't think it will be. Simply because people will not take take it. We've got to, we've got to let us go sometime. Please, let us go. Time, gentlemen, please. It is getting time. Really, it is getting time to quaff up. So I waffle down. Now there was no salt today, so all we need to do, let's have a look how much mud that produced. 100 mile around trip. Not a lot, not a lot. So that's how it works. The road trip goes out, the car comes back in. This floor is hot. The temperature in the garage should be 21. Normally it's just hold at 21. Yes to, yes to 21. Some little projects on the go on the bench here. I'll tell you about them nearer the time. South America calling then to answer those questions before we wrap up. South America calling. No, South America not calling. No news on South America. A couple of people saying uh, this uh, car's not on the system. No, it seems to be when I check. Never mind. I've got it down. I got the colour wrong, but I just sent the lab book back to check the colour change. I did tell them it's silver, but they didn't en enter it in. Everything else is right. So I'm not sure why people seem to think it's not on the system. I don't think there must be a problem with your computer because it's, it's working on my screen. Um, what else? What else we got? Let's sit in. Have a look. There's nothing you've seen all this. You just spent, you just spent an hour and a half with this car. <laughs> I've got, to, I've got to dry it down, that's the only thing, you know, you've got to keep doing that. I have these little bump stops on the wall here, look, and I'm not lined up with it. That's the when you open the door, you don't catch it. So, it was a great trip I enjoyed today. Well, you know, I have a confession, it's the next day. It's not really today. But I enjoyed today, let's just say, for example, it's today. Does it matter? For you, it's the evening, it's Friday night, and everybody's legless. Why not? Where else can we go? We can't go to pub. So this may as well be our own virtual public house, mightn't it? I'm not uh, endorsing alcohol. But it's your choice. I don't think a little bit of what you fancy does you good, you know that. Just keep them units within tolerable levels and watch your midweek drinking, folks. You're not going to like me for that if you're a, a quaffer in the week. But I'm just saying... Now, talking about the video and the editing, obviously I did a little bit different where you get the little windows. Tell us what you thought about the little windows that come in. I think it just gives you a better angle on the film before we wrap. Also, the YouTube takings are ridiculous. Like, if you've enjoyed that style of road trip and what we get up to, and you think it's worth £1, £2 or £3, there's hundreds of us on, up to hundreds of us on. It'd be nice if everyone just chucked some cash in. Because uh, that pay for the fuel, you know, and uh, the trips run at a loss. Otherwise, I like making them, but if I carry on running at a loss, it's you, you don't get as much in uh, incentive. In what's the word? Incentive to go out thinking it's you know it's not the weekend. You're sort of going that, that was out. That was midweek. So you're just thinking I need to fund these road trips. I don't want a lot, but if everyone chucks in a small amount, look at that um, button at the bottom and press it and put one a pound on or two quid on or something. And if enough of us do it, if 50 of us does it, that's 100 quid. That's paid for that road trip film tonight. It's paid for, well, it hasn't paid for the editing time, but it's paid for the petrol and a bit of wear and tear and a bit of editing time. It'll help. That's all I'm saying. Everyone seems to be doing it now. A lot of people doing these road trips have got their own Patreon accounts, but if you don't want to do the Patreon thing, to keep these videos going then you can do the super chat button there i want to try and raise at least 50 quid tonight to pay for some of the fuel on this trip if it's entertainment yeah you can go to another channel that's free but they'll ask you for money in the end it all comes down to it if we can get a tv company to sign us up then that'll be great and then we don't need anything they can pay but at the moment it's a bit of a, a dead end here so yeah it's a bit of a let me just flip you around so you i'm still alive i am 
Still alive. Oh, I am still alive. And I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed going out in the car today, yesterday, whatever it is. And I've enjoyed doing the, the typing away as well tonight. But as I said, I could do with some fuel money. It's a, it's a shame that YouTube can't produce it yet. I don't know how we can do it. If you've got any ideas, how, how, or maybe we're, maybe I'm thinking that it isn't worth what I think it is, perhaps. Because, like I said, a lot of people's channels are just doing 50,000 hits. I don't know why we're not doing that. I just don't know. A quick answer, a, sarca a sarcast sarcastic answer could be, because you're rubbish. Well, at least I've got my own personality. and I don't mind. I'd rather be me, you know. Uh, face trackers keeping me centered. I'm trying to frame the dash therefore go in front of the dash There we go. So you get the steering wheel. Yeah, I'd rather just be me But it'd be nice to try and get some some raise some money out of it or alternatively get the channel up to say 50,000 uh, um, What we on 22,000 subs get it to 50,000 subs or 100,000 subs by maybe I'm just gonna have to come up with different content Maybe what you what I, the only way to do it is to is to hardcore restore but it's 20 grand where there's other ways you can make money out of YouTube where the capital outlay is nothing like that example borrow everyone else's car and do a car review but is that really me can you tell that's not really me do you know what really me is hardcore welding and those road trips finding old buildings railway trains other classic cars and as you as you can see before anyone gets a smart ass idea not that my loyal fans will but any peripheral fans or ones using false accounts you know those lot um before they say on you don't know what you're on about you, you you go around you didn't even look at the i like it when they say that where you walk straight past the car that's a good one you spend all the time on those pieces of shit yet you walk past the best and rarest car well i don't know anything about cars so how, how am i gonna know it's the rarest one show me a mark three cortina four five one two even you know at least i'll have a chance I'm not a car reviewer, I'm not a walking Wikipedia, although I can tell you about Cessna 140 aircraft, light aircraft if you want, because I've flown one. That's a video for another time. But before we go, I just want to say thanks for watching and spending your valuable time and your drinking time with me. If you want to meet up in a pub, we'll have to be when all this rubbish is gone. Then let's meet up in a pub, you know, let's uh, chat with a real pint around a table uh, somewhere maybe in a central location of the UK. We could uh, do a Cortina City meet up. Don't have to drink, of course. I'm sure we can uh, organise um, at the bar. They'll have, they'll have uh, tea, they'll have coffee, they'll have herbal teas. If we get the right place, there's going to be refreshments across the board, of course. I'm not saying we're all going to be legless, but it's uh, for me. <laughs> well, it won't go amiss. So um, for now, I'm out of here. It's time to uh, recline the seats. And let's put those bed levers on. It's 99. We go to bed in the garage tonight. Guard the car. We're cosy, we're warm. And here's my advice for you before we finally finish. There's some alliteration there. And the Fs are always difficult to say when you're smiling. Uh, friendly fire. Uh, okay, so here's some advice. A nice pint of water for you with some vitamin D. Some vitamin B also helps. Um, I was thinking, was it uh, who was it who said that they took an, in, an injection of vitamin B off the doctor? Because uh, it was someone who'd oh no, it was a TV presenter, and they'd been out on the ale big time and were feeling really rough. And apparently, I don't know if it was legit or not, but the um, the, the uh, support crew. Gave them vitamin B, like quite a big shot, and it uh, apparently helps a hangover. I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong actually that. So vitamin B, some water, whatever you want. Let's recline and go. It's, it's, you know you've got to go. So whoa, gosh, there we go. I couldn't quite do that. The seat leap. I don't like rattles. Did you hear that squeak there? And now, and now before you say the end has come, before you sing Frank Sinatra, who remembers right? Uh, pub, pubs and clubs, late 70s, early 80s, mid 80s even. Last dance, and you did her knees up with Frank Sinatra. New York, New York, and all that in a big circle. Yeah, hell, even the Congo, when you used to go out into the street. Wow, what days they were, night clubbing. Night clubbing, eh? Then were the days, the last dance as well. If you'd not copped off, you always had the last dance. You could always try and grab someone at the last minute there in the club. Oh, 
Seems like a million years away. Decent music too. I don't think the youth... I don't want to sound old by saying the youth of today. That's nonsense because I don't want to insult people's intelligence. And, you know, everyone's, everyone can, um, you know, experience their life. But they don't do that anymore. They don't do those last dances anymore. Or do they? You know, what a shame. But anyway... Grab yourself your bacon sandwich, whatever you want, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Pete C from Cordesina City, hope you enjoyed. What a great bit of fun it was, and as I said, let's try and raise some petrol money, please. I'm afraid I've got, I've got to. Things are tight, but let's keep to the hardcore. And I know you want to see other cars, other Mark Threes. The pressure is on, and rumours of a Capri. You know, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, forgetting, I'm not forgetting, but till those things happen, that's why I'm doing the road trips, okay? Bed leavers, we'll see you soon. Good night and over and over and out from PC at Cortina City for another Friday night road trip. This time we did the cars and garages. Thanks a lot. Let's, let's listen to the clock tick. I'll pick it back round. Go to bed with a clock, hold on, the clock, the clock. Tick, 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 tick. When it recharges, it makes that clunking noise. I love that. Yeah. Have a look.